Almalı. As a matter of fact, 95% of those circuit cutter switches installed without consultation are installed incorrectly and there's no benefit. Hi, welcome. I'm excited and delighted to share with you the new Trifield meter. The Trifield meter kind of has a special uh, spot in the heart of many uh, professionals in our, in our field, I have to say. Uh, one after the other has to admit that we all started with a little Trifield meter. Uh, the old model was you know, uh, always stood out, the, the needle to show us the magnetic fields. Um, we all knew that the magnetic fields was its claim to fame. Uh, it also had the electric fields and radio frequency radiation setting, or microwaves as it was called. Um, but it wasn't really quite sensitive enough in the opinion of, of those in environmental medicine. Um, so now very excited, we have a, a new trifield meter. The older model uh, will no longer be available. That's being phased out. Uh, and so it's uh, out with the old and in with the new. Now this, uh, this meter uh, is a little bit different. It's a little bit more costly. It has um, they've combined some features which uh, consumers have been asking for. So that's of course always to be applauded. Uh, okay, so if we uh, have a look at the, uh, the workings and the, uh, the display of the TF2. Unit is nice, uh, you know, hand holding size, so that's good. Um, it's not too, doesn't feel light and, and cheap, it has a good qualitative feel to it. The dial is uh, relatively simple, um, off position, then the magnetic field and electric field uh, measurement settings. So there's a standard flat response settings for magnetic and electric and there's a weighted section for magnetic and electric. So where before there were two models, um, you had to choose what, word, what sort of measurement type you wanted. Now you get both in the one unit, which is of course um, very nice. And then we've got the radio frequency setting on the, uh, the far end. There's no buttons anywhere else on the unit, uh, which is interesting because how do you change the light and the audio, and I'll show you that in a minute. And on the back is the uh, battery compartment. So just turn it on. A little uh, funny sound so you know the audio is on. There's also an audio indicator telling you that the audio is on. Then we have our uh, reading there. It uh, tells us the units, milli gauss. Now the old trifold meters had the needle, uh, and so to kind of recreate that, because it was kind of the look of the trifold meter, uh, they created this bar of, uh, of lines they can fill up as if to indicate like a needle. Uh, so that's kind of cute. Um, and here we have the peak hold value. So of all the samples of measurements that it takes, it monitors what the highest value is and just shows that here for a number of seconds. Well, that also means that if, when you adjust the meter, as in its angle, or if you walk somewhere else, you got to wait a couple of seconds for this peak hold to let go of this higher reading. Uh, in my experience, it's more the peak hold reading you should be paying attention to than the very quickly changing number down the bottom. And on the top right, as you can see, we've got the battery indicator. It's a 9 volt battery um, set to last between uh, 20 and 12 hours, depending on if you're using the backlight and the audio. And uh, easy to replace yourself. Now in terms of the, the display, it's easy to read, so that's good. In my opinion, they could have made the peak value a lot bigger, if not the same size, or personally, I wouldn't have minded if they were the other way around, um, because I think that peak hold is far more valuable than this number here. In regards to the recreated needle display, I, I have to say that I think it's a bit of a missed opportunity. Um, the scale here it goes from 0 to 10 to 20, 50, 100. Now being electronic, I'm sure they could have adjusted how this lit up and how the scale was um, you know, divided. Uh, in my opinion, um, you know, people interested in health, all the action, all the information, all the decision making is done around the 1 milligauss and the 0 0.3 milligauss mark. 1 and higher being the value 
you're really trying to avoid and um, yeah, 0 0.3 kind of being your ideal reading in a, yeah, in a bedroom environment. Um, so having no indication on this line to me, this is it's, it's cosmetic only. It serves no purpose for me because I can't see by these lines what reading I'm looking at. If, if it was up to me, or if, if you know, if a future model of the TF2 were to uh, come out, um, I would much rather see one milligauss right smack in the middle of this display, and 0 0.3, maybe a third of the way in. Um, because all your decisions are, are based on these sorts of values. Uh, three could be somewhere here and then I really don't care where it goes after that because it's just all bad news. Um, right, so yeah, so that's a bit of a shame. Fun that the, you know, it has this link to the old look, um, but I think they could have done um, something far more valuable um, with that display in the middle. Okay, so um, to change those lightings and audio settings, you just have to, uh, it's probably easiest to leave the, the unit on, slide open the battery compartment, and you find two little buttons there. So if I press the audio button, which is the bottom one, the audio is off, which we can also see on the display, a little indicator is missing. I'll press that on again. With the lighting settings, same idea, you just hold your finger on the button, watch the display, and just press the button to go through the you know, different um, brightnesses. So off, first stage, second stage, third stage, and off again. Um, so yeah, so you know, good way. The buttons can't get damaged. It's not something you would change all the time. Um, so I think that's a good idea to hide them behind the uh, battery compartment. Normal 9 volt battery, and uh, we no longer require screws to get to it, um, which is great. So uh, easy access and easy to replace for anybody. Okay, now the only thing I could, um, you know, kind of um, comment on is that when it comes to electric fields, your body attracts those electric fields depending on where you are. I've now got my other hand on the wall behind me and now I've taken my hand off. You see the body is affecting um, those readings. Um, so in my opinion when you do an electric, fall in, uh, electric field measurement you should put the unit down and then look at the number that you're getting, not when you're holding it because you're not really sure what it is you're actually measuring or looking at. In terms of electric fields, it's a shame that that reading doesn't go lower than one volt per meter um, because you know, if it went to 0 0.1 volts per meter, then at least we could tell that we were uh, in a good area in terms of electric fields. Um, basically, when we see those numbers, we already want to start mitigating it because the value is already too high. So it's a little bit too, too coarse, too, uh, too big a number. You know, it should have been able to go smaller. Again, that's where your your, your decision process is. Um, so, what you know, what recommendation can I give you in terms of those electric fields? Well, when you put this on your bed and you step away, if this reading shows two, or this peak hold there shows two or three, um, you've got something that needs mitigating. Fairly safe to say, um, as mentioned. Um, Electric field is a problem in about 95% of bedrooms. You're not going to be able to assess and fix that yourself. You will need some assistance with it. Right, and then for radio frequency radiation, you know, the value changes, as we can see, it goes to uh, milliwatts per square meter, which is a rather, you know, coarse um, reading again, showing me now 0.3 milliwatts per square meter, which might indicate to somebody like, oh great, there's almost no radio frequency radiation here. Uh, whereas, a matter of fact, um, we want this lots, lots lower. You know, if it was 0 0.01 milliwatts per um, meter square, um, then it's starting to look a little bit positive, but you might still want to put shielding in place. Um, you know, if, when it's 10 times less than that, then we're starting to be very happy. 
Okay, so yeah, interesting, fun, um, good to sniff out sources of radiation with, have a bit of a play with, but when it comes to making decisions on whether or not to shield or protect an, her an area or a room or a bedroom against radio frequency radiation, um, this reading is too, too coarse. Um, it can't really show you that a, yeah, a room is, uh, is healthy. Okay. A great tool to go house hunting with and investigate those magnetic fields and make sure that you're not getting yourself into a property that has a problem that you can't fix. Um, so just to recap on that, in my opinion, you should be looking at the peak hold value on the instrument and that's the reading you should go by. Uh, my preference is in the standard reading, standard magnetic. Um, I'm not a fan of the weighted variety. Um, more, you know, the other professional gear is also not weighted. So this is more like the professional units. Okay, that then brings us to electric fields and radio frequency radiation. And very much in line with the older unit, uh, the electric fields, it's just not sensitive enough. Uh, it seems to underread compared with the other instrument that we compared with. And um, the lowest thing it can indicate to you, we would already be wondering or, or, or thinking we should mitigate that situation. So I don't think it can show you when an environment is okay the way it is and that no mitigation is required. I think it can indicate to you when something produces an electric field and there is something there, but not necessarily verified that it's okay and, and healthy to be there. So. I don't think it has that, that sensitivity, which is a shame, but you know, you know, you get what you pay for and this is still a wonderful price point for what it is. Um, in terms of radio frequency radiation, um, yeah, at milliwatts per square meter, it's just a bit too coarse. Um, I would have loved to see microwatts per square meters instead, uh, but again, there'll be a, you know, an issue with price. So, um, where does this leave this? Well, I think this is a nice unit where you can go around and measure devices with to see what produces radio frequency radiation, um, but not necessarily the instrument to go in a bedroom and say, well, are the levels okay? Should we protect ourselves with shielding? Um, that's not really what this is for. So I think we're kind of back where uh, we were initially, the trifield meter being a great source, or a great tool to measure magnetic fields with, um, for electric fields and radio frequency radiation, it's nice that it has it, uh, but keep in mind that for those two areas, you will need the help of a professional. So by all means, uh, use this tool to go house hunting and, uh, and find a property. When you think you've got the right one, um, then get a professional to come through and check your work with this meter, with their instrumentation, and then uh, uh, forward from there on. The electric fields and radio frequency radiation are normally normally easily or one way or another addressable where the magnetic fields is the thing we're trying to avoid. So thank you for coming along on this little uh, exploratory uh, investigation into the new TF2. Congratulations Alpha Lab. I think you did a great job and um, anyway enjoy. Should you need some assistance um, there's professionals out there that can help you. Um, you can ask us. There's other people. Um, we'd be delighted to assist you. Thanks. Mm -hmm.